In this video, we will demonstrate the import of content into FileNet P8 using Exilio's FileNet Import Connector. The tools we need to do this are the XIL IDE, where we've built our scripts, and the unified data model, the UDM, that contains all the content that needs to be imported. The files that we are importing have all kinds of extensions. Some of these files have version, and some have custom metadata, which we can see in our UDM. For instance, here is an example file with custom metadata. You can see here that permissions have already been mapped to the format that FileNet supports. As the security in FileNet is reliant on LDAP, permissions are very detailed. Versioning is also supported. This document has several versions each with different content and metadata. Now, let's explain the conceptual model of the migration process using the UDM. The UDM is our one-size-fits-all data model that we use to store data in between extraction and import. The first step is to load the metadata of the source system into the UDM. The UDM is divided into two parts. The UDM standard, which contains most features supported by most content management systems, and a custom model that takes care of the custom document types defined in the target system. Thanks to this design, migrations are usually a matter of defining mappings between the UDM and the target system. Often, extra information has to be taken into consideration. To complete the data that's been extracted from the source system, it's possible to add information from other sources, such as a relational database or other content repositories. Once the data is loaded and the custom information is prepared, it's possible to process the input in a format that's similar to the output. For this demo, we needed to implement a custom model in FileNet P8 to match the content types recorded in the UDM. This is not mandatory, but for this demo we wanted to replicate the structure of the UDM into P8 with as much fidelity as possible. So for every data type in the UDM, we created a corresponding class in the FileNet P8. Here, for example, we see the agenda type with its properties. This corresponds exactly with the structure in the UDM. We are going to import our demo set into FileNet Workplace. Here we see the repository, the object store, and demo import folder in which all the content will be imported. To run the import of the data, we open the XIL IDE and load the demo migration project. This is a standard XIL project and therefore highly configurable. For the configuration, we use the configuration files, which you see here. These separate the variable configuration from the transformation logic. Here we can configure all the aspects of the environment. For instance, the name of the UDM database and the location of the executables and binaries. Let's take a look now at the source code. The standard project has four main directories. In the configuration, we do most of the custom mapping. The connector directory provides the API to interact with the target system. The lib directory contains library files. Finally, we have the project folder with all the robots that we can use to perform the migration. To import, we have three steps, prepare, import, and finish. The prepare step makes sure that the UDM is prepared to export its data and that the target system is ready for import. During the prepare step, we also start an external application, which is a proxy server. The import robot uses common functionality defined in the FileNet API 
which opens a connection, loads the configuration, and runs a crawler. This creates a document in the target system for each document in the UDM. All of the details of the migration, the so-called mapping, are in the getObject function. The mapper library takes care of generating this function starting from the mapping file, which all have a standard format. Here is an example of a mapping. Every mapping has three functions. One that converts the name of the mapping to and from its representation in the source system. Then we get the parent mapping to be applied before the current one. This allows us to divide the mappings into a hierarchy of types, which can be applied incrementally in order to obtain a completely formed migrate type. And then there are the details of the mappings itself. For the agenda document, which we showed before, we can see how the metadata is set. The data corresponds to a UDM document, which we have seen here. We've mentioned before that in the prepare step, along with the preparation of the environment, we also start a proxy. This proxy is a RESTful interface that brokers requests from XIL to the FileNet P8 repository. This has been done mainly for security reasons, as the security model of FileNet P8 is not compatible with the security model that XIL uses. Therefore, we decided to completely isolate the security functionality from the implementation. Let's start this proxy and see how it looks. It's supported by Swagger and should be self-explanatory. The proxy is divided into three layers. We have the core API, which is used to create secure connections towards a FileNet instance. We have the reference API to gather information about objects in the proxy. And finally, we have the command API, which allows us to create or retrieve documents, create versions, get information about users and groups, or get information on the custom types in FileNet P8. Let's start the migration. First, we need to start the proxy and run the initialization procedure by starting the prepare robot. Now we're ready to start the migration. Now that the migration is done, we open FileNet to check if the documents are imported. When we look at this example document, we see that it has a custom type and several versions. Let's see how this looks like in FileNet P8. As you can see, all the items have been imported, along with other custom properties. When we take a look at the versions of this document, we will see the two versions as listed in the UDM.